Well, we are getting reports now that U.S. Special Forces conducting a raid attempting to free an American and Britain held hostage in Yemen by al-Qaeda. But a Yemeni official says that those two Westerners were moved by the time troops arrived, though that team still rescued eight hostages. Let's bring in Lieutenant Colonel Bill Cowan. He is a Fox News military analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Heather. Nice to be with you. Um, and happy Thanksgiving as well. And likewise. Thank yes, you. which will be a happy one for these eight hostages who were rescued. Can you tell us anything that you know about this mission? I mean, we've used drones before in Yemen, but apparently this was a boots on the ground operation. Yeah, well, we've done some boots on the ground operations before, as you know, and this operation, like all of them, uh, really requires precise intelligence in order to be uh, effective in order to, to have a good outcome. Of course, much like the bin Laden raid, Heather, we know intelligence was the key to almost everything in that raid up to the point that the SEALs hit the compound. In this case, it appears indeed that the hostages that we were trying to get had been moved a few days earlier. I'm sure that, uh, that all other aspects of this op were very much similar to what we did mm -hmm. with bin Laden, but in this case, we just didn't have success. Well, and those that were moved, that means that there was some sort of leak along the way. That, that's very possible, although, you know, we ran that mission a, a few months ago in Syria trying to rescue hostages, and they had also been moved. I don't think there's any clear indications that there was a leak in that operation. Perhaps somehow there was. But in this case, this was an operation being run in conjunction with the Yemeni forces. That means that the government of Yemen, some people in there, knew about the mission, knew about the operation, and that's where you have to start wondering whether somebody in there is tied to al-Qaeda and put the word out that we were going to run that mission. You know, and that's what I was going to ask you, because just yesterday we talked about the amount of money that is received uh, by these groups, you know, al-Qaeda and the Arabian Peninsula, specifically there in Yemen, received um, somewhere upwards of $20 million between 2011 and 2013 um, from hostages, from negotiations that they were able to get money for these hostages. And many times, you know, it's not just al-Qaeda that's taking these hostages, they're being assisted by tribesmen there in, in the Yemen region. So how much can we rely on the government there to assist us? Well, well first off, that money issue is big all over, particularly across North Africa, where our NATO allies, who like us have pledged never to pay ransom, have indeed paid maybe as much as $125 million over the last 10 years to get their own hostages out. But I think Yemen represents the same as all of these other countries. When it comes to these radical elements operating outside the government's control, any way they can get a hostage, any way they can make money. Al-Qaeda even has a handbook out teaching people how to take Western hostages, and once you have them, how to negotiate for ransom money. ISIS is using ransom as a way of making money. So the issue we're dealing with in Yemen is really spread out virtually anywhere that there's groups or individuals or tribes or clans willing to take Westerners knowing that they can get some money out of it. You, know, you yourself have been involved in numerous operations in the Middle East. In terms of hostages, you were specifically involved directly in the release of the Beirut hostages. Is there anything that we are not doing correctly at this point when we're dealing with these type of groups? No, I, I think we're doing a good job. I really do. And of course, we've seen uh, since the bin Laden raid a lot more activity on the part of our special ops people going out there. I do give credit to the White House and to JSOC, the Joint Special Operations Command, for running these missions once again. It's always going to go back to intelligence. I think it's critical, as in the bin Laden mission, that we try to share nothing whatsoever with the host country, if possible. Not that we don't trust them all the time, not that we don't like them, not that we don't want to work with them, but it only takes one person inside that group of people knowledgeable to say one thing to somebody else, and before you know it, the bad guys know what's up, and certainly the bad guys have tried to penetrate all these governments. So, you know, I, I give the White House, Pentagon, JSOC credit for doing it. We need to continue to do it. We do not want to pay ransom to get hostages out. It sets a bad precedent. We'd be paying forever. Yeah, and we were able to free eight of them. So what does that say, or what should it say to other terrorist organizations? Oh, well, that's great. We, we Not only did we free eight, we killed it, uh, maybe as many as eight. So that should be a warning out there to all these people. I don't care where they are. Remember, we grabbed a guy in downtown uh, Tripoli who was involved in Benghazi. We can go virtually anywhere in the world, sometimes with the help of another government, uh, often without. And as long as we're committed to doing that, and I wish we were frankly doing that against some of the targets of ISIS targets in both Iraq and Syria, we can, we can do these things. We can do them well. We have the force. We have the capability. We just need to have the leadership that says, let's do it. 
everybody out there who's working against us needs to know at some point we'll have more decisive leadership that indeed wants to do this mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And I know you need to get me off here, Heather, but quickly, <laughs> we have run these kinds of missions in Iraq and Afghanistan continuously throughout the war. Nighttime missions, daytime missions by our elite, most elite special operations forces, sometimes working with the Afghans, sometimes working with the Iraqi special ops. Those units were all great. We right. can do these kinds of things. We just have to be committed to doing yeah. it. Yeah, and, and it makes me so proud to be an American just hearing you speak just now. Thank you so much. Um, happy Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving to all our troops serving overseas today. Thanks. Thanks, Heather. Likewise.